I'm pretty sure I've been invited to speak today is because a couple of years ago, um, I sold my company, NYX Cosmetics, to the world's biggest and the beauty company to L'Oreal. It was one of the largest sale in the beauty industry in a while, and it seemed as if everybody wanted to know the secret sauce. But here's the thing. Um, I'm not some kind of a genius who cracked the code with some secret sauce. I was just at the I was I was just a hardworking entrepreneur at the right place at the right time. A lot of it was luck. When Michael Dubin from Dollar Shave Club was here last time, he talked about luck. And I could not agree more with this. So today I want to talk about how luck and the ability to leverage it has shaped my life and my career. So most important, I want to address the concept of luck and what it means to be an entrepreneur. So throughout the years, researchers have attempted to decode whether there's an actual measurable aspect to what we understand as luck. And many studies have found that what person might perceive as luck has more to do with psychology than probability. So to be lucky, you have to be open to new experiences and see opportunities as they present themselves. So, how did I become so lucky? I have to go back to the beginning, the wonder years of my childhood. So I was born in Daegu, South Korea. Um, Daegu is the third largest providence in Korea. But back in 1973, when I was born, the roads were unpaved, and it was a complete countryside. So I'm the last of the three children. And my parents were the Korean version of the Von Trapp family. And no, not the jolly singing kind, but the kind where the captain is blowing his whistle and the children are marching in single file line. My father, he wanted to raise us the Spartan style. That's what he said. And Spartan style is where only the strongest survive. So <laughs> we were not allowed to cry. He actually said, you should only cry three times in your life, when you're born, uh, when you get married, and when, you, when you're about to die. Like, that's, really, that's what he's told us. And uh, we're not, uh, we were not you know, allowed to like, talk about our feelings, or talk back, or nor raise questions about anything that was demanded of us. And he went as far as, he made us climb up rocky cliff, and I remember these were like, like two-story high rocky cliffs without any safety gear. And he rarely gave us medication because he said um, he thought it would kill our immune system. And uh, he used to feed us coffee when we were in elementary school um, so we could stay up to study. And then <laughs> even on the sickest days, he made us go to school because he said that we were students and being a student was our job and job must be accomplished no matter what. And he said, if you're going to die, go to school and die. Like, literally, that's what he said. <laughs> and uh, he also said, if you know how to crawl, somebody knows how to walk. If you know how to walk, someone knows how to run. If you know how to run, someone knows how to fly. And it's like, he was t like, gee, d dad, thank you. You just told us that we'll never be good enough. Um, sounds harsh, right? But here's the thing. I'm so very grateful for those years and realize how lucky I am to have had that disciplined upbringing. And here's why I say I'm lucky. Because I climbed those rocky cliffs as a child, it gave me a really strong body and I became fearless, which is an essential quality for an entrepreneur. And because he never gave us medication, I developed a really strong immune system and I hardly ever get sick. And this is crucial because if you're sick all the time, you can never outwork your competition. And I know people say it's not how, how hard you work, but it's how smart you work. But let me tell you, all of your competition is working smarter. So if the only way to beat your competition is, to, is by working smarter and harder than them. And because he made me go to school on even on the sickest days, I developed an over-the-top discipline with my work schedule. So in the earlier of NYX Cosmetics, I worked the first five years straight nonstop, without a day off, and without taking a vacation. And by teaching me that there is someone who is always better, he was not teaching me that we would never be good enough, but he was teaching me to be humble 
and always try harder. And I realized this later when I read Jim Collins' Good to Great, and his central message is that good is the enemy of great. Um, so if you, any of you guys have not read um, Jim Collins' Good to Great, I highly recommend you read this book. And a couple of other interesting facts about me is that I transfer elementary school six times. So first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth grade, each grade I went to a different school. Um, and I had to learn how to adjust to new environments like really quickly. And the biggest adjustment came when my family moved to US uh, 1986 and I was 13 years old. And of course, I spoke no English. Um, I knew how to say yes, no, and thank you. That was it. And I was thrown into a seventh grade. And those were the really tough years because I could not understand what the teacher was teaching. So, since I did not speak any English, I had to have all of my senses at full capacity all the time to observe and to evaluate and understand my surroundings. So I became hypersensitive, hyper aware, and developed a highly analytical approach to any situation. Um, now, most people will consider all of this extremely challenging. But I consider it extremely lucky that I was thrown into these situations where I had to be like a chameleon. I learned how to adapt to different environments very quickly. And most importantly, I learned not to be afraid of unknown. When you're running your own business, every tomorrow is unknown. And being fearless of unknown is an excellent skill to have. So around this time, my parents bought a small retail store that sold perfume and cosmetics, and little did I know that this was the prelude to my future. So I call myself the byproduct of child slavery by Asian parents. <laughs> <laughs> that little kid behind cash register telling you no refund, no exchange, that may have been me. Um, so I worked at a family business after schools, weekends, during vacations. I've never had a day off. Um, and at the time, like, I hated it. Who wouldn't, right? But the years I spent at our family business were the best business education that one can ever have. I was exposed to consumer behavior. I was exposed to merchandising, displays. And even as a teenager, at 15 years old, I was already designing displays. So I, w I worked at a family business until I was 25 years old. Then one day, I realized that my friends actually make money by working. So the entire time I worked at my family business, my mom had never paid me. I was that 25-year-old living at their parents' house on an allowance. But here's the, the, the crazy thing, is that even that was a form of luck. Because I did not have a lot of money, I could only admire department store quality cosmetics, but I had to buy my makeup from the drugstore. And drugstore back in the 90s was really terrible. Reds were never red, blues never were blue, and you actually had to burn an eyeliner to get it to work. And one day, I was out with my girlfriends at a club, and as all girls do, we go to the bathroom together. And, <laughs> and if you're a lady, you know that bathroom is not just a place to do your thing, but it's a place to gossip and show off, right? So my friends were like taking out these gorgeous designer makeups out of their little makeup bags. And then suddenly, I was too embarrassed to take out my makeup because it was from the drugstore. And then it was screaming, ugly, cheap, bad quality with those bright color packaging and like gaudy gold foil logos. And at that moment, it hit me. I could start a brand of cosmetic that combined simple, elegant design like Chanel or MAC at a drugstore price point. The reason the prestige makeup is so expensive is because of the marketing cost. And I, know I, I knew that I could negate this, uh, this spending by adapting word of mouth marketing. If you sell really great quality product at a really great price point, your customers will do all the marketing for you. She is going to go out, tell her sister, her mother, her friends, her aunt, and everybody, it's free marketing. So when I told my mother this idea, she surprisingly agreed to loan me $250,000. Um, and she simply said, this was, this was what she told me that still like, resonates with me a lot, is that don't be, she said, don't be afraid to fail, because even if you do, it's much better to experience failure in your 20s than when you're older. So uh, with those words, 
Nix was born. I was ready, I was fearless, and I was full of excitement. And luckily, I was also very young and energetic because Nix was built on pure sweat equity.